I think so many times we're overweight and we're depressed and we go into a doctor and he says, well, diet and exercise. And if you're anything like I was or my wife, you don't have anything in you to go do diet and exercise. So we kind of have this idea around here that we're going to help you feel great again by balancing your hormones and then teach you to live a wellness lifestyle. Because you can't go live a wellness lifestyle when you have an empty cup. Are you curious about discovering ways of making your life better? Then welcome to my podcast. I'm Bob Nickman, and this is The Exploding Human. Listen in while I talk with all kinds of people in the fields of personal growth, health and healing, alternative therapies, psychology, spirituality, environment, and the future. I'm looking for those answers that make life better for everyone. You'll meet cutting-edge practitioners, doctors, artists, filmmakers, business people, and those who have overcome challenges. The brave, the curious, anyone who is out there helping us humans to explore, expand, and explode. Hey, welcome to The Exploding Human. My name is Bob Nickman. My guest today is Ricky Brandon. And we're going to be talking about hormones, what they are, what they do, and why we should get them tested. But first, I'd like to invite you to visit my website, theexplodinghuman.com. Over there, you can listen to episodes, read synopses, see photos of my guests, a little bio on myself. There's a donate button if you'd like to support the show through Patreon. Thank you very much. There's also a YouTube channel where you can listen. That is The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman and The Exploding Human Facebook page. As I said, my guest today is Ricky Brandon of Hormone Balance Centers, and we're going to be talking the function of hormones in the body and how when they are out of balance, they can create many issues which can be solved by balancing them and how we can do that through lifestyle change in diet, exercise, mitigating stress, and supplements. It's a pretty fascinating field which I knew very little about. And we even go over some of my own labs when I had my hormones tested about six months ago and discuss uh, some of the changes that maybe I can make. And a very honest and open discussion about what hormones are, what they do, and how we can improve our life. So here he is. This is Ricky Brandon. All right, Ricky. It's so great to meet you, man. I, I, um, I watched a little bit of a YouTube of you, but I didn't, like I was telling you before, uh, I didn't watch too much. Because yeah. I want to be my audience and ask the questions that they're going to be thinking too. So thanks for being here and uh, hope you're having a good day so far. So far, so good. Yeah. And we're going to talk about hormones. And I was asking you before that I wanted to start with a question that is the simplest question that I don't really know because I, you know, I, I was a, not a big science guy in school, but I, you know, I love this stuff now. Yeah. What is a hormone? You always hear about uh, you know, um, she's being hormonal. I got to get away from her. her. Her moods are swinging. Uh, teenagers are hormonal. They can't sit still. I know there's different types of hormones. So let's just get a brief thing of what a hormone is. Hormones are made by the glands and they're, they're kind of like chemicals that tell other cells what to do. So think of them as messengers that are telling your body what to do. And all of them work in symphony and harmony to, um, to, to tell your body how to react. So uh, a, an easy example of that is adrenaline, right? It's a, it's a hormone that kind of puts you into fight or flight, right? It's communicating the message that your heart needs to race faster and you need to pump blood and you need to, you know, here we go, right? Okay. And um, so I don't, I, does that answer your question? Yeah. That's, the, you know, I, you know, I have people that listen to the show and they might be thinking that, yeah you know, I always think about uh, how the, you know, when you turned into a teenager and, and you start your body changes because hormones are being released and growth hormones and sex yeah. hormones and all those yeah. kinds of things. So, you know, they're powerful chemicals. Yeah. They're all just telling your body what to do next. And so you can imagine when hormones get out of balance, maybe one message gets louder than it should be. Or as you're going through puberty and things are trying to balance out, you know, all of a sudden you have this, this testosterone that might make you seem angrier or more aggressive because you're not used to it. My entire teenage years, I just couldn't sit still. <laughs> I was just like, ah, somebody needs to get punched or something. I don't know. Yeah. I just <laughs> got to get me. it out. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> 
So you got interested in this. Uh, I was reading. Uh, so you had some family members that were struggling with some issues, and so were you uh, with some depression. And you discovered that there was a hormonal level that was low, testosterone, I believe. So yeah, why don't you yeah, talk for me, about was... how that how you arrived at uh, doing this? Sure. For me, I had a supplement business. We were making private label supplements, herbal supplements, and for other people. And I just started feeling just like it was just too much for me. So I took on some partners. And then all of a sudden, the partners felt like too much for me. I didn't want to get out of bed. I was feeling depressed. I I didn't want to go on antidepressants. But and my wife was like, what's wrong with you? You know, I said, I just had like no drive. And uh, I worked, you know, I, I had friends who were hormone doctors, but somehow you don't want to, you don't want to hit up your friends. You know, you and I were talking earlier, you, you don't, you can't be a prophet in your own backyard. Like I didn't want my friend to feel like he had to give me free services or anything like that. So I went to a completely different hormone doctor and he put me on a testosterone cream. Uh, and he said, your testosterone's low. And he put me on a cream. I started coming back. Like you, you, we always think of testosterone as um, just a sex hormone or, or you just want to build muscle. We don't think about it in ways of depression, mental clarity, and even drive, right? Drive to do a hobby. It had been years since I even wanted to do a hobby. People say, what's your hobby? And it was kind of like existing every day. That's my hobby. Taking yeah. care of my family. That's my hobby. You know, if you were... <laughs> I had someone describe it to me like it does have to do with sex drive. It has to do with drive to do anything. And um, someone said, someone said to me, uh, this is later after I'm running the clinic and we have the clinic. He said, if after a hard day's work, when I was a, when I was young and newly married, if I showed up at home and my wife was completely naked standing in the, in her birthday suit saying, Hey, let's go. Right. He would, it didn't matter how much sleep he had. He was ready to go. He says, but nowadays, if that were to happen, I'd be like, can we do this tomorrow? I'm tired. I don't have that drive. Right. Or you work out and you exercise and there's one kind of tired. That's a good tired. You feel like my muscles are fatigued and I got a good workout or you just go home and you want to sit on the couch because you're wiped out. You know, all those are signs of messed up hormones, not just testosterone. So for me, I was feeling depressed, actually mentally depressed. And I get on this testosterone cream and I start coming out of it. it took me about two months before my mind started feeling right. And about three months, my body started feeling like it was coming back, right? Like I, like, wow, I, I feel different, right? And during any of this, none of this was sexual dysfunction, right? I just was mentally exhausted and depressed and brain fog and all of that. So I go to my regular doctor for a regular checkup and they, you know, they make you disclose uh, or they ask you to, what, what are you taking? They want to know everything. And so I put on there, I'm on testosterone and my doctor quickly gives me a lecture. He goes, where'd you get testosterone? And well, I went, I went to a hormone specialist. And he gives me this lecture about how all hormone specialists are quacks. They'll put anybody and everybody on testosterone and you don't need to be on testosterone. And then I explained to him, I was depressed and this, this saved me. This changed my life. My wife was wondering where her husband had gone and he's back now. You know, you, you, you hear the, the negative stories like, oh, you get too much testosterone. You're going to have roid rage. Just the opposite happened to me. I was more patient with my kids. I was more friendly with my kids because all of a sudden I wasn't giving from an empty cup. You know, before I was on my last nerve, it took everything I had. And now I've got the testosterone. I've got some drive back. And all of a sudden I'm the nicest guy in the world because I didn't take everything I had to deal with them. And the doctor gives me this lecture and, and finally he agrees to go, okay, I'll test your testosterone. And if you're low, I'll keep you on it. Uh, thanks, right? Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks for the favor. <laughs> thanks for doing your job. <laughs> so, so he tests me while I'm on the cream, and it comes back still clinically low. 
Now I'm not, I wasn't an old man at this point. I'm in my, my mid thirties, you know, or mm. late thirties. And this tends to be happening younger and younger and younger and younger. I I've had one guy come in at 26 years old and his testosterone was through the floor. We'll get into the why that might be in a second. So sure. keep going on your story and then maybe you can tell me why after. Sure. So mine's still through the basement. He changes me to an injection. <laughs> no. Synthetic? Uh, no. Uh, well, testosterone's a little different than the, than the other hormones, but it's, it's the same. Yeah. It's, it was, it was a synthetic, right? And so I'm, I do this injection and all of a sudden I'm doing, I'm like, I'm like, wow, this is night and day. It's amazing. I finally break down and I go see my friend who owns a hormone clinic, Dr. Jones. I say, Dr. Jones, look, this is what happened. He goes, let's test you again. And he goes, I'm going to double what you're on. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, what's going to happen? Like, even, even when I went, I went up to this range and the doctor was a little, little bit freaking out. Oh, you're a little high, right? My total testosterone was at a, a, a 700 once. And he's like, well, you're getting a little high. I don't want you to have a stroke. I don't want you to, and he starts listing all these symptoms, right? And now that I'm educated, right? Now that I've, I've, I dove into all of this, do you realize you, you just had yours tested, right, Bob? Yes. Uh, oh, I, I'll get to that. I, I got so, my mind is going. I know everywhere. we had so much cool stuff to talk about, but we'll get yeah. to. It. Okay, I have so, all my uh, paperwork. Your, your here. question just a second ago was why is it getting low? Yes, right? at, especially at younger ages. At younger ages, there's there's a couple things. At first, I was told you don't want to go on testosterone replacement therapy because then your body will stop making it. And I go talk to Doctor Jones, my friend, and I go look do I have to worry? Like, and he, he laughs at me and he says, your body's not making it now. What makes you think that all of a sudden your body's going to start making it? So you, you were through the basement. I didn't know how you were even functioning. So let's replace your testosterone and get you back to where you should be. Then um, I started asking the same questions, right? Why, why does it go low? And <laughs> There's there's a hundred answers to that question. Part of it's our food. Part of it's our lifestyle. Part of it's stress. You know, the cortisol and DHEA, the way we eat. We don't have precursors in our food and in our body anymore to help raise our testosterone. We're not eating the kinds of foods. We live a terrible lifestyle where it's go, 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 go. And we're drinking energy drinks and pushing our stress and our adrenal glands, you know, all of those things that work together to help us live a healthy lifestyle. Also, we don't work outside anymore. We don't work. We don't have muscle mass that needs the testosterone to, to, to keep pumping and coursing through our veins. We're not, we're not uh, as much as media would have us see different. We're not, we're not using, we're not sexually active. Right. And so uh, there's just so many messages going to our body that, you don't need testosterone. It, it's so funny how we've become this civilized, in quotes, nation, and we're going against our nature and creating these additional problems that don't need to be there and feeling worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, folks, we got it backwards in a lot of ways. So can I can I ask you? Do you yes. mind talking about your testosterone for yeah. a minute? You, you just got a you just got lab tests and I got lab tests in June, and let's go through them real quick. And some of these may not uh, apply to what we're talking about. They might. Do, do you know where your testosterone is on there? And yeah. did you have free and yes. total testosterone? Yes. Checks? Yes, I did. Let me find those. Testosterone free total. Yeah. I want to hear the total. 488. Okay. 488 is low. Did your doctor put you on testosterone? No, he said you're fine. And you know why he said you're fine? Because the range is 300 to 720. Now, if you were to talk to me two years ago, yeah. the range would be 300 to 900. They've lowered it to 720. Some, some insurance companies have lowered it. And if you okay. were to talk to me 30 years ago, 40 years ago, the range would be 400 to 1500 would be the normal range. They keep changing and playing with it. So let's talk about this. Two years ago, the range was 300 to 900. You're at, what was it? Four, 488. 488. If you were at 301, 
They'd say I was fine. <laughs> yeah. You're fine. You're within range. Here's the problem. People are going to the doctor. They get their hormones checked. We're talking thyroid, progesterone, estrogen, uh, testosterone, you name it. And they feel like something's wrong with them. They feel like something's off. And they go to the doctor and they get these tests. And the doctor looks down at their tests and says, everything looks normal. And you go away from the doctor scratching your head and you go, well, I don't feel normal. So, Bob, you're in low normal. Is that how you want to live your life in low normal? No, no, it is not. <laughs> and if you go to an endocrinologist, endo endocrinologist, he's not going to treat you until you're below normal. Mm -hmm. He's going to wait till you're totally deficient clinically. And then he'll treat you to get you back up to low normal. I want you at around the seven, 800 range, and you're going to start feeling different. Hmm. Okay. So we want you to high optimal. This is the difference of going to a, a specialist or someone who you are paying and you don't have to worry about is my insurance going to cover it. Yeah. Is we're going to treat you to high optimal instead of low normal. We don't have to wait till you're below normal in order to treat you to get you back up to to low normal, right? right? So let's 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 say this was your income. All right, Bob. Uh oh, that now I got you. Okay, I'm ahead of you, but keep going. This is I like this analogy. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're you, let's say you make 25 I don't know what the poverty level line is, but let's say it's $24,000 and you're at $24,550 a year. You're not in poverty yet. So let's not look for a better job. Let's wait till you're absolutely in poverty. Then we'll get you back into just above poverty. We'll get you another dollar or two an hour. So you're not in poverty, right? There's a lot of difference in the way a guy lives at $25,000 a year or $40,000 a year. Big difference. Big difference. Yes. Let's yeah. let's say it's the speed limit on the highway, right? Yeah, you can go 20 miles an hour, but you're going to hold up traffic. All kinds of things aren't going to work. There's people speeding around you. Uh, you're technically going the speed limit. If you're going to go with the flow of traffic, which is all your other hormones and everything, your body's trying to do this and you're at low normal. And those averages, they're averages, they're taking an 18 year old and a 90 year old and they're testing them and they're coming up with some numbers and they're saying, this yeah. is the average. Well, they're also saying this is the, the certain numbers for age groups. They do that too. Yeah. So that's, a, that's part of it. Three to 700 is a wide range. Yeah. It seems like it. It's a big and gap. It, it's, it's a big gap, but it's also a narrower range than what you were talking about Uh and it decades just, ago, when I got, when I first got mine tested, that, that range was up to 900. And if you went back to the, you know, fifties, it was at 14, 1500. What changed? I don't know. Why did they, why did they change it? Because you know, if you went in today and yours was at eight or 900, your doctor's going to start screaming at you and freaking out and saying, oh my gosh, you're going to have a stroke. You're going to have roid rage. You're going to have this, right? He's going to be freaking out. Look, I have seen type two diabetes reverse with testosterone because now all of a sudden you're building muscle mass. You're losing the visceral fat. I have seen osteoporosis in women. Now they don't need near the same numbers as us, yeah. as us men. I have seen it reverse and repair osteoporosis better than osteoporosis prescriptions. Their bone density gets stronger their ability to cope with stress is better. Now, people say, which hormone do I need? You need all of them. Which Can I just start with one note? They all work together. We got to get them all balanced and working together. Um, I, what, what, what do you think of that? What I just said? It doesn't surprise me, but it does. It has flipped a, a lot of what um, I thought was the case. I, I never heard anything about high testosterone causing a stroke. Um, it's it, does, it's a it's a lie that some yeah, doctors seems, will tell you. It sounds ridiculous. Like, oh man, that guy's got high testosterone. Then he had a stroke. <laughs> I've never even heard that as a theory. <laughs> well, um, I I I had a I tried to hire a doctor once in our clinic, and he actually was a cardiologist, and 
um, kind of to test him, I gave him some sample labs and I said, what would you do with this guy? And his labs looked similar to yours for testosterone. And I'm like, nope, he needs to be up here. And he goes, it's my malpractice insurance on the line. I'm going to be the one sitting there. This guy had a stroke. Why did you prescribe to him outside of the limits? That's fear and economic fear and all yeah. that stuff. But why did, why is the, why is the um, malpractice insurance so off? They're just seem, being over cautious. He's used to working in a corporation yeah. where they tell him follow protocol always. Now here's the thing. Doctors got into medicine because they want to help people. Yeah. They want to heal people. And then they work in a job that puts tight reins on them and, and says, you need to follow protocol, follow protocol. So an, an example of, of <laughs> an example of protocol is if a woman comes in with PCOS, that's polycystic ovarian syndrome, right? They have cysts on their ovaries. It's linked to high testosterone. So their testosterone is usually high, uh, but it's, it's more off, often linked to um, insulin resistance, right? And insulin problems. So the protocol is put them on metformin, which is diabetic medication to control insulin and blood sugars. I can show you study after study after study that the herb herbal remedy berberine actually outperforms metformin in controlling blood sugar, especially for PCOS patients. But no one will tell you that. It's protocol, so just do this. And it's easier for men than women. Women have so much more complexity. And they are told all the time, your labs look normal, and they go away. I don't feel normal. And they keep going back or go to a different doctor. And then eventually they end up on antidepressants, particularly menopausal women. And also, I think doctors, particularly male doctors, treat women as not as... Um... I don't know what the right word is. They talk down to them is really what they did. What I, what I noticed, I, I, we had an, uh, an anesthesiologist. My wife did have a C-section at one point and um, he said to her while you're out, um, this is the anesthesiologist, not, not the doctor. He said, why don't we tie your tubes? This is your second child. She goes, no. <laughs> and he he got a little aggressive about it. It was a money maker for somebody, you know. He got yeah. it, and I I was really upset. I I was like, don't even. That's none of your business, you know. So it was just let's tie her up, you know. It was just who's you know why are you making that decision for somebody wow. else or even attempting it? It was it was and it's a it was, you know a good decent hospital, but yeah. He was, you know, an older guy who just felt that was the right thing to do because he believed in it. So, so I'm an advocate of people educating themselves not to go against the doctors. I mean, we need doctors, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but we need to work with them. And sometimes, like, I, we don't call them patients. Sometimes we accidentally call people who come to our clinics patients. But I like to call them clients. Because we don't treat the labs. We start with the labs and then we treat the person. And if you're paying for it, you should have a say in it. And when I, what I mean by treating the person, we're going to ask how you feel. And our philosophy is to get those hormones to the high optimal without any adverse of them being too high. Yeah. And you can't do that unless you know how they feel. So there's lots of hormone clinics that are, you know, injecting little rice sized pellets in your butt. You can't adjust that. You put it in and you're like, ah, I hope I got the right dose. <laughs> I've seen women come in with raging hormones and acne all of a sudden, hormonal acne. And they go, what do I do? And they say, I got a pellet injected. I go, wait four months and then come see me. Now I have another testosterone. It's just testosterone. It doesn't say, it's not the other one. That is, it, is that number is 643 with a range of 200 to a thousand. Uh, so that's better. That's not terrible. You're kind of mid range. Yeah. And then, and, 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 you know, in that, in that range, I would say you kind of get to choose, you know, based on how you're feeling. If you wanted to go up, I would, I would not feel uncomfortable giving you some testosterone, but I also wouldn't feel uncomfortable leaving you alone. So unless you're having some kind of symptoms or something that says, gee, I don't feel good. You know, did they test your thyroid by any chance? Probably. I have something TSH. TSH is your thyroid. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that, are there uh, other numbers around that TSH? Is there like a T3 or a T4? 
It says FT4, FT3. Yeah. Next okay. to 2.7. And and so what is the range on yours for each of those? Um, Every lab's uh, different. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, this, well, th there's only one range and one number, 0.3 to 4.7. And I'm sort of right in the middle there, 2.7. 2.7. And that's your, that's your TSH? TSH with reflex FT4, FT3. That's yeah. what it says. Yeah. Those so, are the only, that's the only number. There's no, there's yeah. not separate numbers. How do you feel when you sit down to, to watch a movie? Do you fall asleep often? Yeah. Uh, same thing when you write a, read a book? Um, yeah. But that, I think some of that has to do with my uh, poor eyesight. <laughs> 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 so I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but, uh, you know, but yes, I, I, uh, seem to, um, I don't, I certainly don't have the verve that I had when I was younger. I mean, I'm 68, so, you know, it's, yeah. uh, uh, but I don't, you know, I don't actually even go by the age thing for most things yeah. because I think that's, that's just a cop out, you know, but, uh, for a lot of things that you can have at higher levels yeah um, so yeah i don't you know i i don't think i'm in big trouble or anything but i would like to feel a little bit more uh you know uh energetic i've i have had some depression not major stuff but uh, did uh, they I, did they by any chance test something called dhea yeah i have it Hold on. Look how good I am. Yeah, I'm man, prepared. you're on top of it. You're... <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought of it when I was watching you on that other YouTube uh, interview, which was terrific. Uh, Funk Roberts, I guess. Is that his yeah. Name? So um, I know I have it because I just looked at it. DHEA 787 with a range of 500 to 4,000. Yep. Okay. So DHEA is a precursor to testosterone. It will also help with your adrenal glands and your cortisol levels. And so if your cortisol is high, right, you're always in fight or flight and your adrenal glands are kind of working overtime, you get the DHEA in there and it's going to lower your cortisol. And it has antidepressant properties. Same with your thyroid and same with testosterone. Those kind of, those three working together. So your thyroid didn't seem terrible. It's kind of mid, mm -hmm. mid, maybe a little bit low. And if you wanted thyroid because you're falling asleep often and you kind of maybe takes a little bit to get going in the morning, or do you have an afternoon lull? Yes, it's more of that. More of an afternoon lull than in the morning. Yeah. So... <laughs> What I would probably do with you, and again, this isn't a diagnosis, and I would have yeah. you meet with one of our one of our doctors, right? But I would uh, just based on what you're telling me, I would I would give you a little bit of thyroid, maybe a little in the morning and a little in the afternoon to help with the afternoon lull. And I might give you a bigger dose in the afternoon. We would check your look at your T3 and T4 numbers. What happens, those are thyroid hormones. So you have the the TSH is the thyroid stimulating hormone. And then you have T4, which is converted in the liver to T3. T3 is what gives you energy, helps you regulate your metabolism and your fat and your things like that. Sometimes people will have a high TSH and a high T4, but you look at their T3 and it's really low. And it means something's going on in your body that's not converting the T4 to the T3. You can kind of think of the T4 as the storage unit. And then it gets dumped in as converted to T3 to give you energy and regulate your metabolism. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's really cool stuff. I, I love this stuff. So what happens when you go to a thyroid doctor, and I don't know if you've, if, if, anyone that's been around thyroid, you'll hear of, of a thyroid called um, Synthroid. A lot of people will take something called Synthroid. Yes, yeah, my neighbor takes that. She's 92. She's at it's, a, it's a, she's it's a low synth there. Yeah. It's a synthetic thyroid. Um, not a terrible product. It's not going to cause cancer or anything like that, like some other synthetic products. But it's all T4. There's no T3 in it. So you have to look at the whole picture. What happens is uh, often a thyroid problem won't even get caught because they're just looking at the TSH. You go in for a basic labs they'll measure just the TSH only. Then you need to measure the T4 and the T3 separately and look at those and say, 
and then and then listen to the patient and say, how are you acting, right? Or listen to the client and say, okay, we think that your T4 is not converting to T3. So we're going to give you a compounded T3 only or a little bit of T4 and T3 to kickstart that T3 side, right? The total number or the or the stimulating number would be the signal or the hormone that's telling your body to make this stuff. So let's say the TSH number is really high, but your T3 and T4 are low. There's something going on that your body's saying, hey, you need to make this, but it can't make it, right? There's, there's all these signals that you're just kind of looking at and the doctors look at. And what I love about our doctors, they sit down with you and they'll spend an hour going through your initial lab results line by line. They have a worksheet. And they write it down and you write down your symptoms and you write things. And by the end of that hour, you know what every one of those hormones does. Often women in particular will come out in tears saying, oh my gosh, I feel so validated. I knew there was something going on, especially menopausal women, right? The, uh, the worst is put them on an antidepressant because then they start gaining more weight, get more depressed. You know, it, it's, it just numbs them out. If it's an estrogen problem, why not give them estrogen? You know what I mean? If it's a testosterone problem, why not give them testosterone? Why give them antidepressants? With your permission, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the difference of synthetic and bioidentical. You brought it up a little earlier. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What happened on women's hormones? And this this is interesting for men too, because we all have women going through this. I've, I've had people that said, this is our last stop before the divorce lawyer. And it's not about sex. It's about one of us is, is acting crazy <laughs> and I can't take it anymore. I'm sure there's a lot of biological reasons for uh, behaviors. Obviously there is. So this is interesting for couples and uh, individuals too, because, you know, when you start to change your behaviors, you don't even know why. Yeah. I mean, so go ahead. This you can't is really... control it. You can't help it. Yeah. You you're, can't help you're, you, all the people that you love the most, you're yelling at them. And you're beating yourself up. You're beating yourself up terribly and um, you can't help it. You really can't help it. It's chemical. Now, you just got to get the right chemical. So what happened was, you know, they came out with hormones. They started discovering estrogen, progesterone, and they started giving it to everybody. They started making it into, in a lab and women were doing phenomenal. They're like, oh my gosh, I feel happy. Uh, the hot sweats are gone. I'm sleeping at night. This is magical. It became the the number one selling drug. It was called, uh, uh, well, I, I'll get to that in a second, right? So they're given Premarin estrogen. They didn't know they had created a ticking time bomb. So um, uh, an example, let me make sure I get the right name here. There's a, a word I want to use that I always slaughter, medroxyprogesterone acetate. That's basically the same progesterone that's in like birth control, things like that. If you look at it under a, a, a microscope, it does not look exactly the same as what your body makes as progesterone. They took a progesterone molecule and they add an acetate and a methyl group to it, making it now patentable. And it'll still mimic the, the same results, right? It'll give kind of the same side effects. But you can't. You can't, uh, you know, yam and soy has natural estrogen and progestins in it. And you you can take that and you can compound it and, and make it in a lab. So technically it's synthetic because it's made in a lab. But if you put it under a microscope, you can't tell the difference between something your body makes and something made in the lab. So that's the kind we want. Then, then the drug companies come along and they add a methyl group and an acetate group. And now it becomes patentable because it's not anything that's occurred before. They made it. And uh, the base is the same, but they put these other things. Then that's what causes the cancer and things. What happened is they're giving this to everyone. Then a study comes out. It was in the New England Journal of Medicine, and it came out in 1989. And it said, we've seen an increase in breast cancer with the estrogen. When you combine the estrogen and progesterone, and now I'm talking synthetic, right? I'm not talking bioidentical. I'm talking the drug companies. Mm -hmm. When you combine them, we're seeing a dramatic increase in cancer. And they came out with this 
And about the same year was when they came out with Prem Pro, which was a combination of these two synthetics, Premarin, Progesterone, Prem Pro. Um, Premarin, by the way, gets its name because it's made from mare urine, Premarin. It might be good for female horses, but I don't know that it's good for humans. So they still come out and they patent Premarin. It becomes the number one selling drug, Prem Pro even though there's been this study that says this increases cancer, they're giving it to everyone. Then the women's health initiative comes out in around 2000 and says, this is bad. This is causing cancer. And you have gynecologists and everyone just kind of like sending out letters to their patients saying, look, you knew the risks when you signed the paper that said this, now, these women's hot flashes went away. They started sleeping well. Everything was different for them. They were happy again. And they're faced with this decision. Do I maybe get cancer in 15 to 20 years? Or do I have my symptoms back tomorrow? The study said progesterone, but it really meant progestins, which were synthetic. And you would be surprised. What do you think happened? What do you think women did at this point? Did they? I would, I would say most of them took the chance that they, they would took get the chance. chance. Yep. They rolled the dice. They didn't want their immediate. You're exactly right. Bioidenticals aren't marketed very much because there's not a high profit margin in the drugs themselves. They're compounded. They can't be patented because they're made by your body. If hormones were bad, we'd take out all women's ovaries when they're 30 years old. We tried that for a while. It didn't end well. Progesterone actually prevents cancer. They they used to, when they did, when they removed breast cancer tumors, they used to wait because there's study after study that proves this. They used to wait until the women's cycle when the progesterone was at its highest because it would slow the spread of the cancer when they took the tumor out. So when women go through menopause, they'll put them on hormones reluctantly the Prem Pro, they still use those hormones. And they'll say, you only can be on these for three or four years. We're just going to get you through the change and then good luck. I have women come in here and a week later, they're on a bioidentical estrogen, progesterone, getting them balanced. And their symptoms go away in two, three days. They sleep better. The hot flashes are gone. And then we keep adjusting it based on how they feel. And all of a sudden they're thriving and they thrive for years. I have one Patient, she's coming in today. Uh, she's 83 years old and she's taking her estrogen and progesterone. She's still a working nurse. She's on fire. She's a younger, I mean, she's she's like a, she's like a 60 year old. She's amazing. I love hearing that. I love hearing that. Now, is she holding on to her youth? You know, some people say, ah, you just embrace your aging, right? You hold on to your youth. I don't know. I don't think she's, she's not a vain person. She just wants, she wants to be functional. You well, know, you know, the thing, the, here's the thing when, uh, you know, I've, I've done some um, interviews with people that are into the longevity piece of, of health. And really the, the, the main thing is if you're going to live a long time, you want to feel good. Yeah. And that's Quality what of this life. is. It's quality of life. So wh why just because there's a number on it, just can, yeah. can somebody not, if, you know, act and feel the way they did 20 years earlier because they're doing things that are healthy for them. It doesn't, that makes no sense. Like uh, act your age, like what feeble and, and falling down and sick. I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> and, and, and haven't we all seen a, a, a 50 year old who acts like a 75 year old? And a 75 year old who acts like a 50 year old, that's not immaturity. They're healthier. I've seen people get younger as they age. They get healthier. They begin taking care of their body. They have the money and resources to take care of. I think that's the, that's the greatest. Uh, uh, I don't, I think it's author unknown who said, yeah, there's this old poem, the interview with God. And he, this guy has a chance to interview God and ask him all these questions. And he says, what confuses you about humans? And one of the things uh, what confuses you about your children? And God answers that they spend all their health to make money. And then they spend all their money to restore their health. Yeah. That's pretty brilliant. And it's kind of sad too. <laughs> yeah. There's something we, we call the neuroendocrine theory of aging, right? And it is, it's this question. Do you age because your hormones are low 
or do your hormones go low because you age? I tend to lean that your hormones are going low and that's making you age faster. That's making all these things, right? These cancer, diabetes. Look, your heart is a muscle. Testosterone builds muscle mass. Wouldn't testosterone be good for your heart? If diabetes and inflammation and all of these things are causing other problems, having less visceral fat because your muscle tone is increasing because you have enough testosterone, even women, women take very little and it changes their life, does the same thing for them, drive. Some men need, if you have too much testosterone, it converts to estrogen. So those men who have man boobs, they might need, depending on the person and the doctor, they might need some progesterone to help balance that estrogen, or they might need for a little while an estrogen blocker, or they might have too much DHEA, which is making them pr produce too much, right? And you need to lower it down. If their cortisol levels are high, we need to get those back down, get your adrenal glands working again. You know, if you stand up all the time and you get dizzy, you get lightheaded, that's a sure sign that you have adrenal fatigue. Because what's, you know, we used to do this test where you lay down, you take your blood pressure, and then you stand up and you take your blood pressure again. Yeah. It should go up because your adrenal gland should kick in and push your blood pressure up so that blood can get up to your brain. If it drops, sure sign of adrenal fatigue. And you've got to give these, your body, you know, in that case, you give some herbs. Sometimes you need, uh, you know, uh, some drugs, to, depending on how bad you are. My wife was so bad once with her hormones before we discovered all of this. I came home, she was sitting on the couch and she said, Ricky, I'm so thirsty, but I'm so exhausted. I've been sitting here for an hour. I didn't even want to get off, get up off the couch to get a glass of water. Will you get me a glass of water? When we got her hormones tested, her ferritin was low, which is her iron. Lots of women experience anemia. A uh, doctor tells you just take this iron supplement, but it makes you constipated, super constipated. So we go to Dr. Jones when my wife is in this uh, uh, situation. Her progesterone, she was estrogen dominant, which was causing her to hold on to weight. She wasn't sleeping well at night, which was a progesterone thing. She was on thyroid medicine already because she had had half of her thyroid removed. He doubled her thyroid medicine. He put her on progesterone. She wasn't she didn't have too much estrogen, but she had too much estrogen for her progesterone. So we raised her progesterone, which helped her sleep at night. She was now getting a full night's sleep. And he said, man, your iron is so low. I'm tempted to send you in for an IV. And, and he goes, let's try. Do you take an iron supplement? She says, I do. And he goes, well, then your body's not absorbing it. I want you to take this food enzyme. And I want you to switch from that iron supplement to this iron supplement. And I want you to take it on this schedule, these times a day, and avoid these other supplements when you're taking it by at least an hour. Her iron came up fast. Uh, two weeks later, week and a half or so, she gets on the scale. And this wasn't about weight. This wasn't about vanity. And she looks at me with tear-filled eyes and says, I lost two pounds. At this time, we were going to the gym. We were working out like crazy. Yeah, just by changing the chemical balance. And she wasn't getting results at the gym. Yeah, you're right, by changing the chemical balance. And she goes, she goes, I'm going to be so mad if that was all it was. I mean, <laughs> she's so happy she found an answer, but she's mad that she suffered this long. She went to the doctor and he said, your hormones are normal. But we go to the right doctor who's willing to look at and treat the person, not the labs. And my wife is thriving now. Well, just the idea of an enzyme that creates the, so the iron can be absorbed properly. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's some really great fine tuning. Yeah. And that's somebody that really understands how. That and she is. wasn't constipated, you know, imagine taking the iron like, like. Plus it tastes look, weird. Yeah. 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 It does. <laughs> and um, man, this stuff is good stuff. And what I really want, what I really want to preach, what I'm, I don't care if you come to my clinic. What I care about is that you begin to give yourself permission to educate yourself and not question just to be a contrarian, but be an advocate for your own health. I think people know, they know intuitively inside something's wrong. And they know when the doctor says, nah, everything's fine. You know that you're not a hypochondriac. You know 
that something's wrong. You know intuitively something's wrong. And so it might be time to fire your doctor and find another one, or yeah. it might be time to add a practitioner or add a functional medicine person or add, you know, you can go too far either way. I I see people take handfuls of herbal pills. I, they don't even have to eat. They take so many herbal pills and it makes them feel sick to their stomach and stuff, you know? Yeah, sure. I yeah. think you got to use it all together. Look, none of us want cancer. None of us want prostate cancer. Oh, that's the other one. That's <laughs> there's the other one, right? For testosterone. Uh, it's going to blow up your prostate. That's why they, 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 they test, test your prostate when they give you testosterone. If you want a good read on prostate cancer and testosterone, his, his name is Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler. The book is, I think it's testosterone for life. Okay. But if you just Google him or put his name into Amazon, you'll find the book, right? Okay. He, when he was doing his graduate studies, his, his master's stuff, he, uh, they took and castrated a lizard. This lizard was not making any testosterone. They'd put female lizards in and, and these lizards would do this push up dance when they were, you know, kind of a courting thing. Yeah. And the females would do their thing and try to get the male going and he would just ignore them. Nothing. Now he had no sex anatomy. He couldn't mate if he wanted to. So then they took and injected testosterone into the brain. He would interact and play again and dance. And his, his basically was proving that testosterone does more than just make you reproduce. It affects your mood. It affects your depression. It affects everything. And he has done study after study, and you'll read about him in that book, where he takes prostate cancer patients, which everybody else traditional protocol is going to tell you block their testosterone because it's going to flare up their cancer. And he does the opposite with great results and they have their life back. There's other doctors who are doing the same thing with estrogen and women with breast cancer. Cause when someone has breast cancer, they put them on estrogen blockers, which makes them feel suicidal because they think that estrogen is going to flare up the growth of the cancer because of all those studies. But when you use estradiol, which is the bioidentical, their joint pain goes away. Their mood enhances their they're not vaginally dry anymore. Urinary tract infections are less because they're now have every, you know, just all of these things stacked up. It's so important. People, they think if their insurance company pays for it, then it's worth it. And if it doesn't pay for it, it's going to be too expensive. This stuff is not as expensive as you think. For someone that comes to my clinic for one year, they're going to spend about 2000 bucks for a full year. That's not a lot of money. In the no, big- it isn't. It, it's, um, well, it's $150 a month, maybe. Yeah. Now you might have some prescriptions on top of that and things like that, some herbal supplements, but that's unlimited talking to someone while you adjust. And after a year, you're going to know what you need to do for the rest of your life. And sometimes it's seasonal. I have some women who take more thyroid in the winter and they drop it down in the summer because they've learned that's what their body does. That's okay. Some people, you know, they, they, they're going into a stressful time of life or some stressful things. And so they might take more DHEA to support their adrenal stress. I want to take away the fear. It's not, you're not, we're not a bunch of crazies here. We look at the, you know, Journal of American Medicine. We look, we look at all those JAMA files and we study together as, as all these doctors go together to symposiums. I'm not a doctor. I'm an advocate, right? So I hire doctors to do it because I couldn't I couldn't go to med school right now. So I hire doctors who are willing to let me pay them to I'll pay them to go to the the symposiums and the studies and understand the medicine. I go with them. Half of it goes over my head. But I look for and identify doctors who really want to make a difference and they're tired of the 15 minute block the company they work for gives them. The the fear factor in people not uh, allowing themselves to open their minds to new ideas can be a block to to people actually feeling better. So you know, we, it, it really is the 
sort of the the core of most uh, problems in the world, whether it's medical or otherwise, is fear. And if and if we can be open to just educating ourselves and looking at some of the numbers and finding people that have dedicated themselves to whatever discipline that they're they're in. In your case, it's this uh, you know hormone yeah. uh, uh, field. Then you know the lives can change. And you know what? Here's the thing. If something doesn't work, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you feel you know, worse. You, experiment. you know, it's like if it, it, try something, be open to it. I mean, do your research, advocate for yourself is like, like you're saying, and you know, not every doctor knows everything. You can't, there's too much information. Right. Just everyone, you have permission. It's your body experiment. Um, Always remember and, and this is not new. Like when you say be open to something new, it's new to you. There's there's hundreds of years of studies on what I'm doing. This is not new. I I the doctor who who I had teach me this stuff retired and he had been doing it for 25 years before yeah. hormones were a big thing. There you go. And he it's safely helped not one lawsuit, not one person came back and said these hormones caused cancer or I had a heart attack or a stroke or not, not one person. In fact, all of them love him. And when they retire, when he retired, they start calling him and he'd say, yeah, call Ricky. He's doing it now. That's wonderful. I love that. I love that mentorship. And I love that you're probably going to be passing it on to somebody else way down the road because you're going to live a long time. (laughs) <laughs> They're so thrilled because now they get to do what they signed up to do, what they went to medical school to do, because I take the handcuffs off Yeah, and go, look, yeah. go, <laughs> I'll pay so, for your malpractice insurance, right? I'll, I'll give you a stipend for your malpractice insurance. So, so like, don't worry about it. Just go like, I'm okay with it. Go. I'm not worried about being sued because I saw Dr. Jones history and he was never sued. Uh, you have to remember this helped me. I learned this early on. An expert always learned it from another expert who learned it from another expert who learned it from some other guy that just made it up. (laughs) Somewhere down the line, someone just made it up. You know, who, who decided to eat a potato the first time that blows my mind, right? This looks good. Let's try eating it. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I always wonder about that. The first guy that to try something. That's it. (laughs) That's that makes me laugh when I think about you know I'm I'm sure it goes way back but it's a pretty funny thing it's like I'm gonna try this leaf uh oh he just died <laughs> yeah don't try that one anymore I mean but, but there was this time right that tomatoes were poisonous there was a time when no one ate tomatoes how do people get a hold of you Ricky because this is really great stuff and I'm, and yeah. I want to um sure. you know get people to uh, contact you if they need to I I have a book that I give away. Uh, you can download the the digital copy of the book and the audio book for free. I have a website called freehormonebook.com. Very functional. <laughs> yeah. Free. So you just go to freehormonebook.com, download the book, read it. And hopefully it'll inspire you to kind of take charge of your own health. Uh, I, you know, this is, I wrote this book for my wife. Mm -hmm. Uh, These stories in this are to inspire people like my wife who didn't want to get up off the couch to get a drink of water. She wanted to, but she couldn't. I think so many times we're overweight and we're depressed and we go into a doctor and he says, well, diet and exercise. And if you're anything like I was or my wife, you don't have anything in you to go do diet and exercise. So we kind of have this idea around here that we're going to help you feel great again by balancing your hormones and then teach you to live a wellness lifestyle. Because you can't go live a wellness lifestyle when you have an empty cup. Yeah, it's so, uh, yeah. You got to start somewhere, and if I'm, you got to you got to up the, the the good feeling. Oh, there's the book. I see. Yeah, it. I want to see what you think of the title. Do your hormones have you dragging, sagging, and nagging? I love the title. So that's yeah, and I give it away at freehormonebook.com. Again, I'm not a I'm not some uh, award winning writer. These are just real stories that have happened in our clinics. You know, everything from from 20 year olds newly getting married that feel like their hormones are out of whack to 83 year olds and men and women. And uh, uh, the story, I hope these stories in here will be a blessing to you, I hope. And then if people want to uh, 
explore doing some uh, hormone therapy. How do they get a hold of you for that? And I know you do telemedicine, so so yeah, don't we, let the fact that uh, Ricky is not in your area yeah. uh, stop you. You can still get a hold of him and, and have some consultation. And do uh, the the website is Hormone Balance Centers with an S. So plural, okay. hormonebalancecenters.com. Okay. And uh, um, we're in Utah, so that's how you know you have the right one. And yeah, we can help anyone from anywhere. We can send you to your insurance company to get the labs. We can pay for the labs. Here's, here's one last thing. When you're going to get labs, this is the craziest thing. Your insurance company usually covers your labs whether I take your insurance or not, doesn't matter. You call them up, you, you give them the codes and they say, yeah, we'll approve that one. We'll approve that one. We won't approve that one. And then you go get your labs and they pay for them. If you got the same set of labs that we run here and you just walked in and said, I want to self pay for these labs, it would be around $2,000, 2,100, whatever. If I pay for them at my wholesale rate at, and I can send it to any lab across you know, in, in, at a theater near you, right? Yeah. Okay. It's around 500 bucks for the same set. You walk in, it's going to be 2000. If I pay for them, it's 500 bucks. It's a racket. It's a crazy racket. Oh yeah. And your insurance company is probably going to be billed out at 2,800 bucks for the same set. So you, if you, if you go to someone and you want to get these labs done, you want to get them pre-approved from your insurance company to make sure they cover them because you don't want them billing you back for one of them. You're going to get zinged. Thank you so much for your time and for this opportunity. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. Much appreciation for you folks listening in to The Exploding Human. Check out the website, theexplodinghuman.com, the YouTube channel, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman, and The Exploding Human Facebook page. Big, big thanks to Ricky Brandon one more time for a wonderful talk. Check him out at the Hormone Balance Centers and get his free book and educate yourselves in this field. It's pretty fascinating stuff, I got to say. So have a fantastic day.